Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome in to a Thursday morning episode of The Pod at the Palace. Curtis Wilkerson and Scotty Bordelon with you, as always, from United States Sports Studios in downtown Fayetteville. Coming to you early this morning once again in hopes that uh, maybe we'll get to join you again later if something cool happens on the roster front. That would be neat. Be cool. Um, Scotty, what's up, brother? Shout out to uh, to Jerry Jones for making things interesting last night. <laughs> Man, didn't he? Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I don't really know, man. I don't know if that's real or not. I don't either. But it was awesome. I don't either. But it's <laughs> like the, it's like the most Jerry Jones type story. Absolutely. That could yeah. be, that could be had. So, yeah, I don't really, I don't really know what to believe. It, it's not totally unbelievable, but I mean. At the very least, it feels like. Um, interesting nonetheless. It feels like maybe it's inflated a little bit. It's like the the whisper game, you know. It starts in one place. By the time it gets to the end of the line, it, it, the lie has grown. Oh yeah, yeah, for you know? sure. And for those who aren't familiar, I, social media was going nuts last night, and it was awesome to watch BBN and Kentucky fans squirm because I guess our our man Chili Donovan, the the ultimate burner account of uh, of information in the college basketball world said that he he heard a nugget that Jerry Jones was offering double the NIL to all of the uh, John Calipari recruits compared to what they were making at Kentucky for him to come to Arkansas. So that was that, that was funny, and you were seeing like news outlets pick it up yeah. <laughs> and people freaking out about it and really up in arms about it, and I'm just sitting here thinking – Kentucky fans really shouldn't be saying anything about paying players, especially now that it's legal. And I get it. John Calipari is Arkansas's coach now, but come on, come on, get your money up. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know what to make of that at all. And, um, it was uh, again, another opportunity for John to hop on pinata farms and, and knock out another video to, to put out there. That was, that was pretty fun. What was that? The, that was a, he put Jerry Jones's face over Donald Trump at a yeah. at a rally or whatever. Just yes, winning, 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 <laughs> winning, winning, more winning. I gotta <laughs> I gotta say time. it again. It's, it's two days in a row now. We've let off the show talking about John Neighbors Twitter. Some people will get irritated by his daily morning. Today is going to be an insane day. Tweets. He's trolling you guys, but you need to follow him for some of the content he's been putting out lately. Some of these, uh, some of these gifts and and videos he's been putting out have been hilarious, man. So, yeah. really good stuff. Really good stuff. It would be so funny if Jerry Jones actually got involved in that. I've already seen a bunch of Razorback fans like, well, why isn't he? Why isn't he doing that for football? What's going on here? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, <laughs> that's a good question. Oh man. Anyway, let's say that Jerry Jones has joined the chicken man world of, of NIL funds for Arkansas, that would be great because they still have an entire roster to build. I know people have been getting antsy because they've got one commitment, but but things are happening. Things are churning behind the scenes. It's only a matter of time. might not be as fast as everybody wants it to be, but it, it, it's coming, right? Already a notable happening of the portal variety this morning. Joe Tipton at On3.com uh, reporting that, that Arkansas is working to finalize a visit from former Oklahoma State, big man, Brandon Garrison, next week. There he is. He's right there. The, the top left-hand corner of the OG Natty State Sports big board. There was a reason we put him up there, and we're going to talk about that. He is good. <laughs> He's a good he player. He is very good. 6'10", 6'11", good frame, pretty mobile, I think, for his size. Yeah. He put up, I mean, he put up modest numbers this year. Seven but Seven and a half, five boards. Okay, yeah. So block and a half. Right. It, he's in the the big Z range in terms of statistics. A little bit higher, but he played more minutes than Z did. Yeah. I see parallels to him and Z from a standpoint of I just think that those are two big men who are in line for a big jump from year one to year two. Yeah. We I talked about with it with Garrison before about how he might be on that Jalen Williams trajectory of just, t- you know, you kind of start to figure out who he is as a freshman yeah. and then he takes off. Yeah. And then at a certain year. point early his sophomore year, he makes that star turn. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. I remember that vividly with Jay Will. I wanted to, I just, I, I made um, Brandon Garrison's profile on our basketball recruiting big board. I don't know if you've seen it yet. What do you think about a Daniel Gafford build for Brandon Garrison? I like that a lot. And I think it makes sense. 
I mean, he's Mo- two, a couple of pretty mobile big men. Yeah, pretty mobile. Same height, long. How much is what's Garrison's weight at? Two thirty. They got him at two forty five. Oh, okay. Oh, so he's he's actually a little heavier than well, I thought. Yeah, two forty five. I think Gafford. He's was long like, and lean. Gafford was two thirty something, maybe mm-hmm. two thirty three when he was in school here. So I mean, that ten pounds can kind of make a a difference. But I think they do similar things, um, especially run the floor. Like they right. they run the floor like again on their toes and not not like they're striking their heels into the ground every time exactly and that jeremiah super, davenport like a horse <laughs> it's boom, super, boom, 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 yeah boom. super obvious that they're lumbering down the floor that's not <laughs> that's not those guys for sure um but garrison he uh he was 84th in the country in block rate last season top 200 in defensive rebound percentage those are really good numbers for a freshman maybe like no doubt about it regardless if you're you know, a McDonald's All American coming in or not. Um, double figures scoring 10 times, had 20 point games against BYU, tournament team. Um, West Virginia was not a tournament team, but Baylor, Baylor was, had a good game against Baylor. No doubt. Um, started every game but three. It was the first three games of the season. After, the, after that third game, started every game. As a true freshman. As a true freshman. So that's. Yep. That speaks a lot about how talented he is. Multiple and blocks in a dozen games. Like, he just yeah, he brings a lot now. to the table. And right. the, the thing that stands out, too, is, like, looking at his college basketball scouting video, they have his have passing as a, as a strength for him, like a, an okay. assist and a half per game. Like, I see him – I saw him in that video working quite a bit from, like, that elbow free throw line area. He can shoot it from there. I don't know that you want him doing it all the time. Sure. Um, he can pass it from there, too. Good active off-ball – players can you know make some money off Brandon Garrison feeds you know <laughs> yeah no doubt about it now he's he's a nice player he's a five yes. and, and but I think you know it's kind of like we said with Big Z it's gonna be kind of a platoon thing there I think and so you need another guy who you can really rely on to play in there and I mean if you wanted to get weird and this is it's not beyond Cal to do this play them both at the same time for short spurts I wouldn't recommend it that too would be often, crazy. but I would not put that past him at all, considering some of the guys that he's played together in the past in front courts. Uh, but there's enough minutes to go around for both of them, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and this is there. There are legs to this, people. So he he was at Oklahoma State. Obviously, they had the coaching change. He entered the portal. He has already visited Oklahoma. Okay, I don't know how. I, I don't know. I mean, he he's an Oklahoma City kid, so right. there's that part of it. But other than that, I don't know what would excite you about what's going on over there. No shade, but it's just kind of been a middling program. So I don't know. Yeah. And he already had a good role where he was at. Anyway, uh, he's taking a trip to Texas this weekend, and, and that's one, obviously, to keep an eye on. They've been doing some work in the portal. We're going to talk have. about what some of these SEC schools, and yeah, Texas is an SEC school now, what they've been doing in the portal. But essentially, if if – he makes it out of this weekend uncommitted, then it looks like he's planning on taking trips to to both Arkansas and Kentucky next week. He's visited Arkansas before. When he was in high school, Arkansas was – they stayed on his list until maybe his final four or five. I, I think, I think yeah. Arkansas was on his list of finalists. In fact, I know they were because I went to Kansas City for a Nike EYBL tournament. And he was on my list of guys that I wanted to watch and talk to because he had Arkansas as one of his final teams on his final cut. Yeah. And he committed to Oklahoma State while we were there. Oh, so I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I, I might scratch that one off the list. But, uh, yeah, and so so he's visited Arkansas. There was a lot of mutual interest there. He's got a really good relationship with Ronnie Brewer, Jr. So there's some stuff to that. And then you add a guy like Coach Cal into the mix, and you add the NIL that Arkansas has at its disposal. And I think if you get through this weekend and he's not a Texas Longhorn, then you got a real shot at getting this thing done. And the other thing to consider, Texas is probably, they've probably already spent a decent amount of their NIL. We'll talk about the guys that they have. Tremont Mark's one of them. Yeah. And they've already got three dudes out of the portal that they've had to, you know. Pay up for. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Set aside some funds for there. So it it's something to monitor. I I just for me as a as a stan of big men, I when I was coaching, we played two big men at the same time. Yeah, I, I could yeah. never have enough. Yeah. And he kind of reminds me of and, and don't get me wrong, like like you said, he can move, he can pass, 
runs the floor, but he's kind of he kind of reminds me of a traditional old school like let me use my rear end and seal you off for positioning and and drop step and back to the basket game. He's got a lot of that. He's good in pick and rolls. So yeah, I, I, thinking about him and Big Z man in the front court, I, I I can't really think about a better situation than that. And I love it because we said that about several guys, <laughs> like a bunch of combinations of guys. Exactly, and you've already got one of them. So all you gotta do is land another one of these guys, whether it's him, Jonas Adu, who's visiting Baylor this weekend, or whoever else that that might be out there. Yeah, I I just like to see that they're one casting it's not an eric musselman wide net but they're giving themselves options while sure. obviously trying to get those freshmen too uh but i also like seeing that that cal is just he's being a little bit more aggressive in the portal he doesn't have a choice but it's nice to see because a yeah. lot of people thought you know he's just never going to change his ways and our, our thought process through this whole thing was he doesn't have a choice Sure. And we're starting to see Arkansas pop up on a lot of lists here, and, and that's I think that's a good thing because you want to be older and experienced, and yeah, you want to get these freshmen in here because they're super talented. But you got to have some vets, man, and uh, it looks like they're going to get them. So yeah, and that, that's what I'm I'm starting to grow more used to. You know, we talked about that like that mindset flip last week, where yeah. you know we had that board out there with 69 or 70 guys <laughs> that Arkansas had contacted, and it's a bunch of like mid-major guys who were nice and like would have been total fits under Eric and now you just have to completely change it's like McDonald's All-Americans yes you're in the running for them yep um top shot blockers available in the transfer portal yes you're you know you're going after them you're in the mix for them best scores like best scores and shooters at the mid-major level um you know who have pro jump shots all that kind of stuff you're in you're in on them um I like Brandon Garrison a lot. I think there's – obviously, he, there's definitely things to, that can improve in his game. Like, I don't think he, he's not a good post-up player at this point in his career. Um, he can't, you're not expecting, a you know, a, a freshman to come in and just get busy on the block right away. But I, I think he can finish with both hands pretty well, finishes yep. around the rim pretty well. Um, he's, exci- he's an exciting – he's an exciting kid. What, what stood out to you about him? Do you remember when you watched him in Kansas City? Yeah. He just he, like stood out from the rest. He did. He was. He just looked the part physically for yeah. me right away. Like he had big, broad shoulders, uh, and was super long. Uh, the way he ran the floor is something that definitely stood out to me. But just yeah, it, it was really those long arms for me. Like he was just able to get over the top with that jump hook on guys. Yeah, um, I really liked that. It, and he was. I mean, he was a guy that I had watched quite a bit throughout his his high school tenure and he's one he's kept growing and he kept getting better and better and I remember it was that summer between his his junior and senior year where he really took off I think he was playing with the the team USA like maybe the U17s or whatever mm-hmm. and he was a force in the paint for them and he kind of went from a dude who was you know top 50ish prospect like a really good solid college high major prospect to yeah. Oh wow! Like this, this guy is really good. And then all of a sudden, he's pushing up towards five star status and McDonald's All American. And so his trajectory and his improvement, something that really stood out. And I also remember, in in a lot of the messages that we would exchange during the recruiting process, especially early on, before he was really zeroed in on Oklahoma State. Yeah, uh, he struck me as a really smart guy. He's just really well spoken. And, and yeah. you have to temper your expectations. Like it's different talking to a guy who's about to be a high school senior versus a guy who's about to be a senior transfer in college sure when, when we're working with some of these recruits and i uh, had a lot of maturity about him so i think i think it could be a really good deal i think he'd be a good fit and i think there's appeal there because of the regionality of it again it means mm-hmm. an oklahoma city kid so who's already got familiarity with campus it's an easy trip for the family to come watch and I know I'm trying to remember what he might have been. It might have been like that North Texas exhibition game, though. OK, yeah, I don't know I why that. that sticks out in my mind. So I don't I don't know that he got the full Bud Walton experience. Oh, definitely not. Yeah, but he was definitely on campus. He took at least one unofficial. He might have taken multiple unofficials. I don't know if he took a full on official visit, 
but it'd be it'd be good they get him back on campus and he's already got some familiarity and everything yeah. there's already someone on staff who had been there throughout that process Definitely and brew helps. that he knows yeah and i don't remember how much kentucky might have been in on recruiting him but it's it's, it's john calipari i mean it's interesting know. that it's uh texas oklahoma arkansas has kind of been the mix kentucky's you know in the mix trying to get in there well. yeah. yeah trying to get in there it's all these teams are going to be in the same league, man. So it's kind of just comes down to like, who do you want to play for? Yeah. That's kind of what it, I mean, I could, that could be very ignorant of me to say, no, but that's not what it looks like. like. It's, it's a, that's a what fact. It looks like you're coming into the same league. It's like, you want to play for Cal? You want to play for Rodney Terry? Do you want to play for Porter <laughs> Moser? Uh huh. Do you want to play for Mark Pope? All the way in Lexington. Or do you want to play for John Calipari? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is an easy decision. It he just needs like, to talk to us about it. I think. In my mind, it, it kind of would be, but I'm not. I'm not six eleven, two hundred forty five pounds, and uh, wanted by a bunch of programs. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So we'll see what materializes on that. But keep your eyes on that on that Texas visit, and uh, you know maybe we'll have a a big near seven footer walking around in in Fayetteville next week. That would be kind of cool. Uh, we're going to touch on a few more recruiting notes here. But before we do, I, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Signature Bank. Signature is a privately held boutique bank that's redefining the banking experience in our region. They blend the warmth and familiarity of a community bank with the sophistication of a commercial bank and the expertise of private banking to deliver unmatched levels of service. If you're looking for reasons to bank with Signature, there's several of them. They're personally invested. They're business-minded, community-focused, right-sized, and forward-thinking. Make sure you get over and check out one of their Arkansas locations or Hit them up online, www.signature.bank to learn more. Okay. So Cal was at the Overtime Elite thing the other day. I guess that was Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Wednesday, as it turns out, he was uh, he was still out on the road. So went to Montverde Academy, checking on Liam McNeely. 2024, probably one of the aside from his own guys from Kentucky, probably the highest rated 2024 prospect left McDonald's all American, yeah. uh, big time shooter. I mean, absolute Grady Dick vibes, uh, from, from that jumper. And it's interesting because people thought when he decommitted from Indiana, that he was going to be a shoe in at Kansas, but it seems like Kansas might be trying to go older. I know they're, they're really zeroed in on AJ store, uh, Rylan Griffin, you know, some, some big wings with some experience. Yeah. And so it looks like, looks like Coach Cal is really working hard to try to get in the door there with McNeely. And it, it, it's a little bit fascinating because I guess it was sometime late last week, mid to late last week, that it came out that, that McNeely was hearing from obviously several schools, Arkansas and, and Coach Cal being one of them, uh, since he had reopened his, or his, his, recru- uh, his recruitment, excuse me, word vomited there. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden Cal shows up down in Florida to to visit with him and get some FaceTime. I just don't think he would do that if he didn't feel good about having a chance to really get in the mix here. Sure. And he's got a whole roster to build. He's not just going to waste his time, right? So that kind of stood out to me. It struck me. And it just is what it is, people. When John Calipari comes to visit you, that speaks volumes. For sure. I think it really does. Is that his Travis Perry replacement in his class? I mean, upgrade. People are talking, (laughs) right? (laughs) So I'm just looking back behind you, all those names. There's five of them circled, and there's one that's not. I mean, there you go. He's also on the board. Right. Wouldn't that be something? And and so obviously, I mean, there's there's work to be done here. He visits UConn in a few days. Oh, yeah. And I don't mean all the let the heavy heavy hitters know. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. Like he's, yeah, he's got, there's all kinds of, like everybody's final four picks. Those are, I mean, they're in his. For sure. They're interested. And from the sounds of it, he doesn't have any other visits scheduled at the moment. That makes you a little bit nervous too. He's got to get out of stores uncommitted for this to really mean anything. Sure. I think that, I want to say that visits the 22nd and 23rd of April. Uh, so maybe late, late weekend or early next week. Yeah. I mean, if you think about some of the guys, I mean, Cam Spencer, Alex Caravan, some of the guys they've had in there who they can just run them off of four screens and knock down threes and then win national championships. Yeah, those are automatic. I mean, it, this, it's, a, it's a pretty easy sell for Dan Hurley. Uh, but I don't know if, if McNeely wants to go all the way to, 
to UConn and, and what you know what that means for him. I don't know yeah, what the he's a Texas what the bag kid, looks right? like. Yeah, he's a Texas kid, so it, it's not a foregone conclusion. Even though it might feel like UConn is is kind of in the driver's seat right now, but what I'm really going to be interested to see is if he leaves UConn and he's not committed, and he starts to try to set up other visits. I, I, t- I got to tell you, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Arkansas is one of them, because I just. It seems like Cal's putting in a lot of work there. And like I said, mm-hmm. I just don't see him doing that at this stage of the game if he didn't feel good about his chances. Yeah, I think there's there's probably some coaches who um, move for attention to get like to grab attention for their program. I think Cal is one of those guys that moves every like his movement is purposeful. Yeah. And yeah, I don't I don't like he's not going to go. He he'd have done something else instead, you know. Right. Going to visit a, a transfer or um, another kid in the class, you know, that maybe has decommitted from Kentucky lately um, or recently. But he went and saw McNeely. I think it's, I think there's intent to, yes. to everything and purpose to every every move that Cal makes. So, yep. Yeah, I think you're 100 percent spot on. Absolutely. So keeping the eyes on that one, I, I would absolutely, I would love to have McNeely. He was at that very same event that I was at in Kansas City, he was playing up. I think he was supposed to be in 16U. He was playing with the 17U. And he just, he shoots the hell out of it, man. <laughs> I mean, it's it's fun to watch. Yeah. So for Arkansas fans who have just been jaded by the lack of three-point shooting for what feels like the better part of a decade now, that would be a, that would be a welcome <laughs> sight. We talked about Kobe Brea from Dayton. Yesterday, it's oh, just yeah. maybe the best shooter in the entire portal right now. Uh, Liam McNeely, I, I'd feel pretty comfortable saying there is not a better shooter in the 2024 class than him. Might be some guys who are close, but there ain't anybody you could look at and say, oh, no, he's, he's, got, a, he's got a better strap than McNeely. That dude can yeah. let it He can let it eat. No doubt about it. Yeah, that's the, um, that's the scout that Jamie Shaw had. He said literally Liam McNeely can shoot the basketball. That's there probably his feature tool, but he's more than a shooter. <laughs> so you're getting – shooting plus other things and that's yeah. why everybody wants him man yeah no doubt about it another name transfer that came to our attention yesterday uh is former texas ford dylan mitchell i think it was eric bossy at 24 7 uh that was saying he you know there might be some some legs to that some mutual interest there and i think we both sold ourselves on that after after watching some some tape and talking through it sure and I, I text a real good buddy of mine who's involved with a lot of the grassroots scene in Texas, and he he seemed to think that there could de- there would definitely be a, a high amount of interest from Mitchell's side. I mean, he's going to be a coveted guy, but might be something to this one. So we're gonna we're gonna pay attention to it. He is an interesting player because in many ways he looks and moves and operates like a wing. But he is an around the rim kind of dude. It's I don't really know how to describe it. So well, he can't shoot. Yeah, <laughs> but let me. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to blow this, blow this up real fast. This is his shot chart from last season, Dylan Mitchell's. Yes, paint touches dunks. That's that's what we're looking for. I mean, here. what we're looking at is two point jumpers outside the lane. Uh, eight of thirty two, not good. Two point jumpers right of the lane, five of 28, not good. <laughs> um, but he was 80% on 140 attempts at the rim. So the guy is a shot blocker. I saw several clips in that college basketball scouting video where he, you know, is coming over from a weak side, helping out, just an attentive help defender. Um, can really run, dude. Like, that's the most yeah. impressive thing that he does. Is He's fun in transition. He really, really runs, and you get. You match him and pair him with a point guard um, and a shooter who can take attention away from him while he's running. That's scary. Yeah, super I mean, he's athlete, super above the rim athlete. What yeah. did you? What did you say yesterday? Fifty-five dunks last season. Yeah, fifty-five I think. dunks. That's a lot. That's a it's that's a good half number. Of his rim scores. Yeah, pretty much. He moves really well. He's tough on the glass and. He's not. I mean, you don't have to respect his shot out to the perimeter. But he's a threat out there because he can put it on the floor and drive it on you. 
Yeah. And he's, and he's athletic enough to get to his spots and, and finish around the rim. I think that he would be a really good front court pair with a guy like Big Z because Big Z, while he's built, everything about him kind of screams center. Well, he can spread the floor and knock down threes. So like it wouldn't be too it wouldn't be too clunky if you had them both right. in there. Yeah. And so I I like the idea of it and I I mean I spent a lot of time thinking yesterday, you know, yesterday we talked about the front court and maybe how it would build out and then all of a sudden Brandon Garrison pops up today as as maybe another potential option, but then we went back out into the office here and we were sitting I was kind of thinking about like what I mean, what are they going to do it at the 4, you know? And we talked about it a little bit, but like, is it going to yeah. be a just a big guard? Is it going to be, you know, maybe a more traditional power forward? And Dylan Mitchell is, he's kind of your, I think your prototypical modern day four man where he's I not. I think a, I said he was like a 3.75 yesterday. That's right. Yeah. Like if, like <laughs> yeah, if you, had to, exactly. you had to put a number on him. Right. That's exactly right. He hasn't made a three pointer in his career, but he's found a way to be, to be very effective either way. What did he shoot? 58% or something from the floor? Yeah, he was. Yeah, I think that's right. He was. 16 and a half percent on twos and then he was 0 of 8 from deep yeah okay there you go so i've got a couple selling points for you love it yukon dylan mitchell against yukon last november 21 points eight boards against that's not Mar easy to do against marquette uh eight points ten boards where was this other game houston 16 points ten boards i mean come on Give me, give me Dylan Mitchell, man. Yeah, give me Dylan. Sign Mitchell. me up for that. Yeah, make the move, get match it done. Him, match him with a point guard that looks to, that looks to push the ball, wants to push the ball. I think that can, I think that can work really, really well. Yeah, no doubt about it. The one thing I wanted to check on Dylan Mitchell was maybe who was heavy in his recruitment. I can't remember. Mm. Arkansas was in on him a little bit, but I don't think they were ever a real serious player. And yeah. so I wonder if if Kentucky was involved in that because I'm pretty sure he was a McDonald's All American kind of dude too. So let's see what do we have here on his profile. I don't see anything from his Texas profile. Yeah, did Kentucky offer him? Let's see. He visited Florida State. No, Arkansas offered him. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything Kentucky related here. So maybe they maybe I they weren't really teams on the like road. Ohio State, Tennessee, Florida were seemed to be involved, right, with him. So there you go. Yeah, he's a dynamic athlete, man. Very six, much so. At six seven, just or he's actually. He's, I mean, he. I was looking at his on three profile. He's six eight two oh five now. Like that's. I don't know. I don't know what that build would be relative to. You know, a pre a former Arkansas player, but sure, my lord, yep. yeah, he's and in, he's intriguing as they come. I like it. We talked about Aiden Mahaney yesterday, the guard out of St. Mary's, who's just was so much fun to watch in that league, the WCC. Or I don't think we're either one of us are really sold that he'd be that dynamic of an SEC player, but yeah. probably a really good role player. Arkansas did officially contact him, as apparently everybody else in the country did. Sure. I think a lot of people are just assuming he's going to be Michigan bound because one of the assistant coaches at St. Mary's is over there now with okay. Dusty May. That might be a better fit for him than than the SEC. I think his his playmaking ability and his three point shooting could translate. I wonder about his ability to finish, which is was a big part of his game. He's a, he's a crafty finisher in there, but it's so physical in the SEC. Yeah, and then who's he going to guard is, is kind of what I wonder. Um, but no, we were watching that videos yesterday and I'm like, there's no other league yeah, <laughs> that he's going to get these exact shots from or in like everybody else is just going to be walled up exactly where nobody was in the WCC. Yeah. He was getting layups. Like I, I think he's a good player, but I, I think I watched that video and was, and he, he may end up here. Who knows? <laughs> Who but, knows, man. But, um, I think he's an exciting player. I think there's just. I don't want to. I don't even know what I'm really trying to say. I don't think he can get the same shots in other leagues that he could, he got in the WCC, and that's nah. That's could be a little bit potentially concerning, you know, because he's a scoring guard <laughs> for sure. Yeah, exactly. At any rate, though, it's it's good to see things heating up on the recruiting front. Yeah. The commitments will come, 
and I, I just say as patient as you can. I get it. Uh, the freshmen, they're a little bit different than transfers. I think that's what you have to understand. Like you can request out of your letter of intent, but until you are officially granted your release from Kentucky in this case, uh, there's really not much you can do. And, and so only two of those guys hadn't signed yet. And I think it was Knox and Richmond, Billy Richmond, I think. And the rest of those guys had to get yeah. an, an official release from their letter of intent. That's something Jaden Quaintance was talking about in a interview. I think it was a pro insight that I was listening to yesterday where they asked him about, you know, Cal and how much he's been able to talk to him and everything. He was like, well, really not much, but I plan to because until get my release from the letter of intent, like I can't, can't talk to any other coaches unless the, except for the ones that are at my school. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a part of it there to consider. And it's another reason why when, when everybody's like, well, who could be the next one to pop or whatever, then my mind is always immediately gone to Knox because, well, he's, you can already have those conversations because it, he was just a commitment and, and not a signee. Right. And we've already seen, you know, Cal down there getting FaceTime with him. So uh, that's a little bit more of a process, I think, than meets the eye. People could probably look back to Ron Holland and remember when he requested his release from Texas, and that was extreme. Like, they just didn't give it to him for a time. freaking month. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's not going to be that crazy, but I kind of see what I'm talking about. And then some of those guys might just want to – like Big Z, for example, he was going to follow Cal anyway. He's been to Arkansas. Like he's 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 spent a night in Fayetteville. You know, yeah. he, they went and ate somewhere. Like he's he's familiar with it. He was at Bud Walton Arena for a college game day game. Like he at least has a, a semblance of an idea of what he's getting into. Sure. And it's also not as big of a deal to transfers because they're older. They're older. They're more mature. Uh, they have different priorities in terms of of what matters to them in terms of making commitments with freshmen. Family's more heavily involved. It's I'm sending my baby to school kind yeah. of deal. Yeah, a lot of them are probably just going to want to come check things out before they before they pop. So yeah, it makes a um, lot of sense. I know it's I know it's uh, it's fr- it, it can get frustrating and people are antsy about it. And I'm I'm real anxious too. You know, I want them to start building this thing out. Yeah, you get really excited about all the possibilities, and then you're kind of like, yeah, they it is true though. Like they still just have one player mm-hmm. uh, on scholarship. So. I understand all that, but there's also still just a lot of guys out there who are really good players. That I just wonder if Arkansas is going to get involved with, and that right. I'd like to get them involved with. And I know that we kind of put together a list of, you know, possibilities of yeah. names that we, that we haven't heard Arkansas connected to that we'd like to see. Um, let's just go back and forth real quick, and then I want to talk some some SEC stuff, and we'll get out of here. Okay, I'll give a name, then you give a name, and I, I'm curious how much these will cross over. Okay, uh, the first one that that stood out to me was Tyrese Hunter at Texas. I like if, that. If one. you're looking for a lead guard, I know we've we talked about Jeremy Roach. You know, DJ Wagner is is an option. Tyrese Hunter is a dude who was he might have been Big Twelve Freshman of the Year at Iowa State, and then he transferred to Texas and. He hasn't taken like the meteoric rise I think that people expect him to. But he's still been a pretty solid player and, and somebody I think could be really productive with a change of scenery. I like I like his game a lot. For sure. Um, John L. Davis. He was my next one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that seems seems natural, dude. Come yeah, on. yeah. Nelly Davis, it's man. It's like Woo. the top available guard in the transfer portal right now. Like it's a it's a no brainer to just at least reach out and say, Hey, I'm John Calipari, how are you? you yeah. Know, are you, what you think? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, big time, big time player out of Florida Atlantic. He was the one. He was on our original portal board. I think he's on the other side of yeah. what we got yeah. going on here. But I remember we did a, we clipped something out of a podcast and, and put it out as a short, essentially, where I said, if I had a million dollars in NIL to give one player, if they entered the portal, it would be John L. Davis from FAU, and I, I, I stand by that. I would still do it right now. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, listen, Jerry Jones, just, you know, front me a brick, man, and I'll, uh, I'll disperse it for you. Just don't even worry <laughs> about it. We got you covered. Um, okay, you had John L. Davis. I had Elijah Martin as okay. another one, yeah. his teammate in the backcourt. So Yeah, know. he was like that third wheel on the – that FAU too. Is he like second team all conference or something yeah. like that? Yeah, he's a yeah. good player. Another really, really good guard, solid guard, experienced guy. I liked him a lot. But I, I mean, listen, Nelly Davis is, he's up there, buddy. 
Tell me if I'm insane for this. Okay. Okay. Mason Gillis from Purdue. I almost wrote him down. I almost actually said to you while we were sitting here before we started recording, what do you think about Mason Gillis? Yeah. And his fit. He seems like he should have been better than he was. 100%. Yeah. He, he really impressed me when Purdue was, played Arkansas in that exhibition game. Just yeah. looked the part. He was knocking down some threes, and I was like, why is this dude not better than he is? Yeah, 47% three-point shooter on 124 attempts. He's a big dude. Yeah, I mean, 6'6", 225, that's good size, good frame. Um, six nationally in offensive rating last year. Yeah. And he's a guy who he took less than 14% of that team's shots and his his O rating is sky high. I mean, he's he's got he's a he is a role guy. But your role guy shooting almost 50% from three, dude, would be would be insane. Yeah. Would be insane. And he's a he's one. Like he's been he went to the he spent four years at at, uh, at Purdue. Been to a national title game, been to a Sweet 16. Also been upset by a 16, but, you know. Yes. You live and learn. It's a lot of experience there. Yeah. And he's a career 41% three-point shooter. Career on almost 400 looks. I like that a lot. I'd be very interested in that. I have no idea what his market looks like so far. Hadn't heard much about him since he entered the portal. Yeah, that's what I did a quick uh, Twitter search earlier. And, I mean, it's like, you're transferring from Purdue. Yeah. And so a, a nice piece on a team that, you know, made it to the the final, like the national title game, you're going to have cream of the crop suitors. Like it seems like UConn would be silly to not be interested. Duke probably, you know. Mm -hmm. Arkansas might as well jump in there too. Yeah, no doubt about it. it. It was interesting that you brought that up. And this is a name that I brought up in the in the Discord yesterday. It's kind of in the same vein, but he, he's a little bit bigger of a dude. But Brandon Angel from Stanford. Yeah. Do you remember him from the Bahamas? Yeah. We didn't know for sure if he was going to play. He had like this weird, almost like a cast thing on on part of his hand. But he wound up playing. He is, uh, he's really good. And he's entered the portal. He's 6'8", 240 pounds, but he's, he's, I mean, he's got guard skills. Yeah. And he was kind of a matchup problem. He's the one that's kind of got the, the chicken wing funky jumper. Yeah. But yep. it, it's pure though. Yep. He kind of got overshadowed by the Spencer Jones dude or, or whoever it was that teed off on Arkansas in that game. Yeah. But he's a really nice player. Uh, he was, he was all packed 12 that's two years ago. About. Yeah. He was all packed 12 two years ago. And this year he averaged 13 points, just under five boards. He shot 57% from the field. Um, that doesn't suck. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then he also shot 44.7% from three on about two per game. A little over two per game, actually. There so that's uh, And he was 81.6% from the free throw line. Just a, a big, you know... Kind of one of those, he, he's probably more of a, a 3.5 on the scale of, is he a small forward or a power forward? Yeah. And you, you could really do either one with him. And, I mean, I like him a lot. And, again, like, I just, I haven't heard much about this dude. I need to look into it more, but I think he was uh, somewhere in the top top 100 or so of, uh, of the rankings. Maybe, I can't remember if it was which one I was looking at. I think it was on three. And so he's, I mean, out of 1,700 dudes, that's pretty good. And just, just been quiet. Yeah. And so, I don't know. But I think about, you know, Cal in, in the past. And I don't know, Just he just seems like a guy who would, it would make sense. I don't know. It would, so. for sure. Um, I think you mentioned this name to me yesterday or the day before. TJ Bamba from Villanova. Yes. Love that dude. Yeah, I'm a big Nova guy. Yeah. Yes, you are. TJ Bamba, 6'5", 215, 37% from deep against D1 teams last year. He Sean looks was, bigger than that, by the way. He really does. <laughs> he's He huge. really does. He moves like he's six. He moves like he's 6'7", but moves like he's smaller, much yeah. smaller than that. Um, shot almost 41% in, um, in league games last year. I just think he looks the part. It's from the Bronx, got the Northeast 
connections, got the toughness about him. Good. That's also a really good point. All yeah. that. Like, he started just, his career at Washington State, which is weird to go from yeah New York over to, to He's Washington State. One of those State. guys where you like we saw him in the Bahamas in uniform, and it's like, of course he went to Nova. Yeah. Yes. He's one of those type of guys, grown man type guards. Yeah. Looks like a like a defensive end. Or something yes. like he's a he's a just a big dude. Yeah, yeah, I like him a lot. That's a great call. I would love for Arkansas to get in on a on yeah, a dude just like get that. in on him. Yeah, why not? Tell make him tell you no. Yeah, and so I guess the point is, as we as we finish this exercise, like there's just a, a lot of really good players out there who could help Arkansas or anybody, and it's you know. You got a lot of roster spots to fill. There's a lot of dudes who can fill the spots. Yeah, absolutely. And, and help you out. So, and, and it's a lot of dudes who we're not even talking about yet. And there's going to be more than enter, uh, but they do have their work cut out for them because you know, it's uh, it's heating up, man, in the SEC. Like it is. portal activity is picking up, and we wanted to close on this today just because I mean, we don't want to freak anybody out because everybody's had kind of a head start here. Uh, but it's going to be a talented league again, man. And just looking at, I've got the team, the 24 seven sports team transfer portal rankings pulled up right now. And there's a lot of sec flavor in here. Ole Miss is one that really stands out to me. Their class is phenomenal so far. Yeah. It, it's really, really good. I mean, they, they picked up Dre Davis yesterday, who was an Arkansas contact, the Seton Hall kid, really, really talented wing, um, they got two of our favorite bigs from the OG portal board. Uh, kind of those undersized but just powerful forwards. Mikhail Brown-Jones out of UNC Greensboro. Malik Dia out of Belmont. I, I, would, I would love to have either one of those guys right now. Absolutely. And I've heard some people say, well, like, I know they've had the they've had Cissé and Jamarian Sharp and the, the big seven-foot whatever shot blockers. But if you think about – when I think about Mikhail Brown-Jones and Malik Dia – I think about Chris Beard's really good Texas Tech teams where they had the De Silva dude who transferred yeah. from VCU that he was like 6'7", but 240-some-odd pounds, just big mm -hmm. physical meatball. Yeah, and those guys can play together. Yeah, exactly. And so I think it's actually a really good fit for, for a Chris Beard coach team. And it sounds like they're in a really good spot to get Pop Isaacs out of out of Texas Tech, who's I mean, he's a really good really good league guard. Yeah. So you, you pull those four dudes of what they have and uh, – Ole Miss might be onto something in basketball, man. That's a... <laughs> yeah, they might be for real. I think since Chris Beard, the Chris Beard stuff died down around these parts, like he's gotten really busy and the yeah. portal's putting together a nice class. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Dennis Gates too. Like, yeah, man, his recruit, like they're really moving toward winning a game this calendar year. I think there's a possibility that it happens. Marquez Warwick is a nice player. Um, and they got my guy Tony Perkins. Like Tony Perkins, that's a that's a vet Big Ten guard. Marquez Warwick's a what he was almost a twenty point per game scorer. And then you know Jacob Cruz is going to get some shots up too. It's crazy how long ago it feels like the Arkansas was tied to Jacob Cruz. Done it was like yeah. first we were few in hours, Nashville. We were first few hours of the portal. Yeah, yeah we were we in the board. we were in Nashville getting ready for the SEC tournament, and we were. Uh, I think we just we just came back from Broadway and it was kind of late, but we were watching some of those mid low major conference championship games yeah. at the Airbnb and having a Bush latte. And I was like, "Oh, it's Jacob Cruz kid just DM me!" Like, <laughs> you know, I'll never forget that. And I was excited about him at the time. But yeah, they've uh, they've done some pretty good work so far. They have. There's some other ones that jump out to me. Sam Alexis from Chattanooga is committed to Florida. He's a really good pickup for them. It's a good fit. Your guy Cam Carter from K State is at LSU. That happened a little a little while ago. Darlin Stone Dubar from Hofstra is at Tennessee. Um, what at again? That one. That, <clears throat> one, that hurts. Dude. I know, man. Liked him a lot. And then, uh, I mean, JP Pegues at Auburn. That fits what Bruce Pearl wants. Kind yeah. of that that smaller. Smaller one. That Auburn, can score. who's getting Janai Broom back for a fifteenth year. Yeah. Sometimes so. you're. Sometimes your best pickups are the guys that you already have. Yeah, as, exactly. As Trilly says. Um, I think Bama's done pretty well. Like, I don't know much about the Chris Youngblood kid from South Florida, but he's like he's a good. top 25 player. And then Houston Maletti from, 
from Pepperdine. Yeah. What's um, been interesting about them is like half the freaking team is transferred too, and they're coming right. off of a Final Four. Yeah. And and Sears is testing the waters as he should. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if he comes back or not. I think Estrada Estrada was the one guy who was out of eligibility. I think on that team, and they kind of viewed Maletti as the guy who to come in and replace him. They got young blood. That's nice. But uh, Nick Pringle, I don't think he's a very good player, but he's he's kind of was an anchor for him, you know, defensively and brought some physicality in the paint. He's gone. Yeah. The Sam Walters kid, who's a talented young guy, he's gone. Rylan Griffin hit the portal. Uh, and, a, and a lot of their younger players, so it's kind of weird, but... That's crazy. I guess money's talking, huh? Yeah, and they also have Big Cliff visiting this weekend. I saw that. If they get him, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> really upset. Yeah, we're going to have to go for a long walk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> that exactly happens. right. Obviously, Texas got Tremont Mart. Yeah. Nice work there. They're trying to get Brandon Garrison. It, it'd be cool if that didn't happen. <laughs> Don't um, want to see that pick and roll tandem. LSU even got a couple of really nice pieces. Mm-hmm. Cam Carter out yeah. of Kansas State, who was on our board, um, really talented scoring guard. They got the Jordan Sears kid, which is uh, I think he was UT Martin. So like just a mid major guy who was scoring twenty points per game. So a couple pretty good guards there. But yeah, I mean, the SEC is just going to be good, man. And it is that the conference itself produces just as many, if not more. NBA draft picks every year than any other league. And obviously there's there's a lot of NIL in this conference and some really, really talented transfers that come in. There are no easy wins in the SEC. None, and none at so all. Arkansas is going to be re- – they're going to be really good. They're going to be very talented. It's going to take a little bit of time to get this roster built up to where everybody wants it to be. But, yeah. You just almost feel like you got some catching up to do. And I think that's why everybody wants this thing to get on steroids and just really start growing quickly because you're, you're seeing the other other schools around you that you're going to be playing, uh, making some nice additions. And you're looking around going, everybody's getting taken up. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the reasons why we just went through about 10 names of, of guys who we haven't even heard you know, connected with Arkansas, but just guys who are out there that could be really, really big pickups potentially if they were able to get involved. So Yeah, um, I think the Julian Terry – is that his name, Julian? Yeah, um, going to Texas from Indiana State. He's a he's, he's a nice, good. He's a nice player. Indiana too. State was, had a good team. Yeah, so. he was well over forty percent from. Yeah, Julian Larry. I'm sorry, Julian Larry. Yeah, yeah. Julian Larry for Rodney Terry. Yeah, they've got uh, <laughs> two Indiana State commits. Yeah, but one of them's not Robbie Avila, so <laughs> that's tough. But yeah, that's a good. That was a good good pickup for Texas. Getting getting Tremont Mark. He's you know what you're gonna get with T Mark, man. You yeah, they really are. For sure, I'd be interested to see if he takes another step as a as a defender. Or if we just kind of see more of what we saw this year at Texas, yeah, who knows? But yeah, you're right. There's going to be no easy outs in the league next year. Like there's a, I think there's a kid. Maybe I'm wrong about this. I think there was a kid that Arkansas had contacted in the past. He was uh, one of the Virginia Tech kids. I could be wrong about that. Where did he go? Um, I don't know. Tyler Nickel. Tyler Nickel. Yeah. Maybe I'm yeah. thinking. No. I'm, or Sean Padula. He might be getting ready to go to Oklahoma. I think I'm. I think I'm totally backwards on this. I'm thinking All about right. a uh, a kid from Vanderbilt. Hold on just a second. Yeah, they got Tyler Nickel. Vanderbilt yeah. got Tyler Nickel, so that's a that's a good get for them. Yeah. I mean, that was a Cal transfer contact. Who's coaching that team now? Is that the uh, Mark Byington? Yeah, the James I Madison think that's dude. Right. Yeah. Uh, so. Yep. Yeah, I've got Good one then. of the JMU guys too. So. Yeah. And then Mark Pope is going to get some guys. Yeah. And Kentucky's going to get some dudes. So. For sure. They've got uh, Big Amari Williams visiting this weekend. They're trying to get out on Garrison. They're trying to get on. It, it's almost like they're recruiting everyone that Arkansas is, which is interesting. Yeah, that's but, wild, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh no look, man. But going after the same guys. Yeah. Yep. All right. I think we're done here. I think so. For the morning. Will we be back later? We don't know. But we'll be prepared if that's the it case. It would be nice if we did. Yeah. It would be very nice if we did. I think if, if if Arkansas fans could get into the weekend with, you know, another commitment or two, they would be a little bit less stressed out. I'm not saying that's gonna happen, no people. Doubt about it. But if it did, that'd be that'd be pretty neat. Yeah. So 
we'll see what happens. But uh, maybe we'll get some news about some potential visits coming up this weekend. That would be that would be a nice turn of events as well. But as things come in, we will uh, we'll continue to talk about it. Yeah, so. and like with the uh, with the guys, the Arkansas contacts. Check out our website. We build a profile for every guy that Arkansas contacts. Yeah, highlights, shot charts, notes, an Arkansas related build. If there is a precedent for this person, yeah, <laughs> that Arkansas has contacted, um, yeah, be sure to check out the website. We're updating that with every contact. No doubt about it. All right. Well, we appreciate everybody as always for tuning in. More good news is coming. Just a matter of time. Keep rocking with us. Keep rocking with Cal. All is well. Appreciate you guys. For Scotty Borderline, it's been Curtis Wilkerson with Nice State Sports, and we'll talk to you very soon.